Well folks, good morning. Another beautiful winter's morning. The sun's about to pop up. It's one of those mornings where it's pretty cool. Canola is flowering nicely. Some of it's a bit later than the other. It's a wonderful, wonderful day. got a special guest old Robbo he's back hey, mate. it's looking good, looking good mate. I just I just caught him spending a lot of time shining up that chrome tip <laughs> so we can see ourselves in that now so no it's good giving it a bit of love eh yeah mate yeah get a few things tidied up before we head off on Monday no, let's go I'll get a bit more done yeah so there's no you can't see any evidence of any leaks or anything that or nothing was missed did we did we get it a hundred percent the first try did we yeah i think so mate i think so oh we can I thank thank brad for that eh yeah yeah <laughs> just got to rectify a little bit of a breather hose on that side oh yeah yep there's a couple of little pipes on the back there i just got to double check but that's an ongoing problem with the swivels mm. the o-rings where the radiator swings out yeah yeah i think we had trouble with that we put new o-rings in that last oh like probably Probably six months ago or yeah. eight months ago or something. Yeah. So they're still leaking, eh? Yeah, well, we've replaced them once. Yeah. But I think with a bit of vibration yeah. and a bit of hard going in and out of head ditches and stuff. It's a great idea to uh, be able to swing things out, but yeah, those swivels don't seem to last very good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> John Deere need to rectify something with them, but they probably got a 500 million of them laying <laughs> on the shelf. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Nah, we'll keep going there. All right, mate. So we still have the rotors to go in. Now Brad's just, um, yeah, so we're, Brad's being noisy, so we'll just stay away for a minute, but um, yeah, it's all looking good. We got the, uh, Josiah got the new plate here on. Um, we, yeah, the top hat has just got to go in, but I think that might even be coming today or it may be early next week. So we might be able to put the top hat in, but we should be able to get um, the, a rotor in. The one Brad's working on should go in this side, so we should be able to slip that in, but it makes it a lot easier to get the top hat in without the rotor in there. So we'll probably be stuck there. Um, it'll be like that over the weekend, just with one rotor in it probably. So that's all right. That's how it is sometimes. Um, now the feeder house we've got sitting over here. It's um, basically just needed a new belt, and I think Brad put a few new bearings in a, a few of the idlers. Um, and the cogs... A few of the drive cogs here um, we've got to make up. Um, so that's what's been happening a bit. And yeah, so you can see the remnants there. You just cut out the old bit and um, weld, uh, weld it onto a new 
new um, just the, the outer bit so that way you can slip it straight back on so that's that we just got a little bit to fix here um, and I think I think that'll be it pretty well so this here I think when the rock went through it it um, yeah just the rotor come around and, and wiped out that a bit which wasn't so good but we should be able to fix that pretty easily ourselves well it's always harder getting the rotors back in um, it is pretty straightforward taking them out but what we have to do is take this um, back section of the concave off and that way we can um, yeah then we can you get something in there and, and pry it off pry, uh, we can actually lift the back of the rotor up because it needs to be lifted up to line up in with the, the drive um, the gearbox uh, so yeah it needs to slot in there so it can be a bit fiddly trying to get it set right and, and mucking around there but not too bad considering Well, we've got one in. Let me see if it's light enough in here, but this is where the other road is going to go. Um, so basically, it's, it is a lot easier to get one in because you can climb in here because you can see that's where the rotors are. Hey, Brad. Hello. <laughs> so back in behind here where the other rotor is, um, you've got to line up the teeth. Um, in the back of that, so it can be a little tricky. Um, there's a couple of different ways you can do it, but generally, we've probably found the most reliable way is just on the other side. You get a big um, crowbar and um, you can just lever it, um, pry it up. So you've got to lift the, the whole rotor up, um, and then yeah, you just try and line it up with mirrors and things and get it roughly right. But it is a lot easier this one because I was actually lying down in there and I could um, sort of half see um, to, to line it up but yeah it's not no real easy way to do it but um, yeah it can be done at least if you're wondering why I look a bit odd it's because I forgot my hat and I'm in desperate need of a haircut so I'm uh, rather scruffy looking at the minute but what I'm going to do is the canola um, as you've seen in previous videos is actually just very vibrant and pretty and I've been trying to wait for the right time to be able to send the drone right up and get a full picture of the whole um, property and um, yeah just for interest sake because um, I think I said in the last video we have never had only canola on this property um, we've always usually done it in or split this property in two um, so you sort of either one thing around the hill area and then you'll have something on the on the other paddocks but um, yeah so it's, it's it is a never happened before kind of situation um, so I will send the drone up now this may not interest some but for those that are interested on what drone I use and um, other things I'll just um, quickly show you some of the stuff I use for anyone that might be wanting to take footage, start a YouTube channel, I am by no means an expert on that, but I do like drones. Um, what I started the channel with was a little um, Mavic Mini, so that's a DJI drone, that's the real small one, and 
um, yeah, it was just perfect for what I wanted. It's a great little one to learn on, um, pretty cheap. And yeah, it was just, it could basically do, it would still do everything I really needed it to do. Um, but I, uh, which vlog was it? It was one of the earlier vlogs I did. I actually crashed it into a tree and um, it was gonna be a couple, two or three weeks wait to get it repaired. So I ended up buying another one and I did like the idea of getting one that was a little bit bigger. So I ended up with a Mavic Air 2. Um, so I got one of these. I've still got the Mini, um, and I don't carry it with me. I only carry this one. But the Mini is probably about that size in the body, and yeah, like it's 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 quite a, it's probably half the size all in all. Um, but this one here, um, you can do about 65 k's, I think, um, an hour. Um, so it's, it's fast enough, you can get to where you want to go quickly. It's not as affected by the wind as the, as the little, little one. Um, but yeah, sturdy. This one's got the, the sensors on the front and underside and the back. So if you're flying backwards and you're heading towards a tree, obviously you can't see it because the camera's at the front, it'll, um, it'll pull you up. So that is very good. And um, you get about... Um, I think it's claimed about 32, 33, 34 minutes or something like that, which just for general flying, if you're not doing anything too crazy, that's pretty well right. Um, I get generally, because I'm zooming here, zooming there, getting the shots I want, doing all that, so I get a little bit less than that, but it is it is perfect um, for what I want to do. So that's what I use for that. Um, now, as far as GoPros, um, I only use the GoPros just because we what we're doing it's very hard like if i was to carry any other camera in a pocket or try and put it on anything we're bound to knock them off and gopros are probably the toughest i guess um, they are a little bit more expensive but the video stabilization of the gopros is um, from what i've seen anyway is incredible so i actually do do a lot of vlogging on my phone but it it's quite a bit more shaky so when i can i do try and vlog on a gopro like i'm doing now um, and that just makes it a bit smoother for everyone. So that is basically that. I've got, I think we've got a total of four GoPros. Um, we've got a GoPro 8, which is the one Phil uses. We've got a GoPro 9, which Dad uses. And I've got two GoPro 10s. One sort of as a spare, but one's mainly for mounting on machinery. It's got the strong magnetic one, and one more so for vlogging, because it's got the microphone, um, which is important for when it's windy. So anyway, that could be quite boring for some but hopefully not um, so yeah I'll throw the drone up and we'll see what shots we can get Well guys, it's a very fast approaching the end of the video. Now we'll do a final update. Um, this here, we've got the trailing rasp bars going on. We've just got to grind the paint off and put them on. So sort of halfway through that. Uh, we've got the one rotor in obviously. The top hat's not coming until about four days time. The work on the head is gonna be put on hold for a little bit um, after these couple of things are done. Um, we'll have a sneak over here and have a look what Brad's up to. I think he's working on the, the um, sprockets. So he's cut the old sprockets off and machining down the ones ready to fit the, uh, the new sprockets on. Have you got the new sprockets yet, Brad? When are they coming? Tuesday. So the new sprockets, um, yeah, they'll just basically come. You get the right amount of teeth right diameter and everything and then you just weld them weld them back onto here and they're going to be about the same time as the top hat i think we'll see what happens in the next video i'm not sure whether it's going to be i don't actually know what it's going to be about to be honest might still be working on the headers um there could be a bit of spraying and stuff going on because it's starting to dry out enough now um so there'll be a bit more paddock work and things like that happening the last few weeks have been really good actually we just 
with we've been able to work on the dozers, get a few of those things sorted out. Um, but yeah, we haven't actually been farming much at all, really. So I guess we better start doing that again because um, that's supposedly what we do. Canola's going to be flowering for another couple of weeks, probably. It's looking really good. Other than that, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll catch you in the next one.